Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at lenses. So lenses work off the concept of refraction. Refraction, if you remember, is just the changing the direction of light when it goes from one medium to another. So here we have some examples of lenses. We see, we use lenses every day of our lives. We've got a projector up here, has a lens in there, a magnifying glass, eyeglasses or contact lenses, those are lenses. Uh, this thing that you see on vacation that you have to put quarter in to, uh, to use that. Those are lenses in there. Essentially, they're, they're little telescopes. Telescopes have lenses. And then another thing you usually see on vacation, the peephole through the door in the hotel room. So all these are examples of lenses. Now, the most common lens that you use all the time, I didn't put on here, but it's your eye. Your eye has a lens in it that changes the direction of the light rays. We'll talk about that another day. Two types of lenses, convex and concave. Sounds a lot like mirrors, right? Okay, but be, be very careful. So a convex lens is a converging lens. If you remember, a convex mirror was a diverging mirror. And then a concave lens is a diverging lens. If you remember, a concave mirror was a converging mirror. So be careful with the terminology there. Now that wasn't done that way just to confuse you. There is a reason for that. So if we look at this lens, a double convex. So if you look from either side of it, light goes through these. If you look from either side, it's bending out towards you. That's why it's convex. And then the double concave, if you look from either side, it's bending away from you like a cave, so hence the name concave. It just so happens that the convex lens converges light, the concave lens diverges light. So just the opposite of what we had with mirrors. Uh, several types of convex and concave lenses. We're going to stick primarily with the double convex and double concave, keep it simple. But the one property that is true for convex lenses is if you notice all three of these, they are thicker at the center and thinner at the edges. And then the concave lenses, they are all thinner at the center and thicker at the edges. So if you wear eyeglasses, just by feeling them, the thickness of them, you'll know if it's a converging lens or a diverging lens. So let's talk about the, the diverging lens first, the concave lens. To do that, let's imagine two prisms just stacked on top of each other like this. You've got light rays coming in parallel. Let's look at a light ray here. When it goes from air to this prism, which is glass or plastic, some transparent material like that, it's going to bend. It's going to refract. It's going to obey Snell's law. So I drew in little normal lines here. I've got a normal line here. It's going from a faster medium to a slower medium, so it's going to bend toward the normal line. And then when it goes from the slower medium to the faster medium, it's going to bend away from that normal line. So it actually bends twice here, once when it enters and then once when it leaves. Both times it's bending away from that principal axis. So you get that diverging of light. So let's look at an actual diverging lens here because they don't really look like that. It's more of a smoother transition there. So all these light rays coming in parallel are going to diverge. We can model that as just bending once. It actually will bend twice, once when it enters and once when it leaves. But we'll just model as bending once. And they all diverge away from that focal point. So just like mirrors, that focal point is an important concept here. So there's your diverging lens how we get an image formed in a diverging lens. So let's say we have an object over here, and just like before, it has light um, shining on it, and that light reflects in every direction. We're just gonna look at two rays coming off of that. One ray, it's going parallel to the axis. It will bend away from the axis from that focal point. And then another ray will come in here. It bends when it goes in the lens. It bends when it comes out. And if it's aimed directly at the center of the lens, what happens is it bends and it unbends, basically. So it ends up going the exact same direction. So if we're out here looking through this lens at some object, we see these two light rays coming at us like this. Our brain traces them back. And it looks like they're coming from this point here. That's where they intersect. So that's where we get, where we get our image. Notice it's virtual because these rays diverge, so we will get a virtual image. That image is located on the same side of the lens as the object, so that's a little different than mirrors as well. But the common thing is the light rays diverge, we get a virtual image. 
and notice it's a small upright virtual image. That's what you're going to get with these diverging lenses always, a small upright virtual image. So here's a couple examples. This one, if you just look through the lens, so if you're nearsighted and you have these concave or diverging lenses on your glasses, you can take them off and, and hold them farther away from your eye and look through them. And you should see everything looks upright but smaller. And some people that have a really strong prescription, you can actually see that in their eyes um, that way. And then here's a guy holding up a diverging lens. So we see, again, an upright, small, and it is a virtual image through that. So that's a diverging lens, only does one thing, just like the diverging mirror. Let's look at a converging lens or a convex lens. So similar, let's take two prisms, stack them on top of each other. We've got light coming in parallel to each other. Uh, Snell's law is gonna apply here. They, the light will refract when it goes from air to this plastic or glass or whatever it is. Uh, it's going from a faster medium to a, a slower medium, so it will bend toward that normal line and then slower to faster, it bends away from that normal line, the net result is these rays converge. They go towards that principal axis. Now you notice they don't all converge at the same spot. That's because we have these silly prisms here. If we drew a normal lens that were curved like that, we would see all these rays coming in parallel will converge at a single point, and that is the focal point. So that is the converging lens there. Now, images formed uh, with the, the converging lenses. So uh, these are both real images. We'll talk about the difference in a minute, but basically we've got, again, light reflecting off the tip of this object in all directions. One light ray is gonna go parallel to the axis. It will converge or it will refract through the focal point, just like we saw in the previous slide. And then one will go directly through the center of the lens. And then this third one, you know, if we want to draw this, this goes through the focal point and it actually refracts parallel to the axis. So these two rays are kind of doing the opposite thing. So anyway, they do converge to a single point and we get a real image there. It's upside down. Real images are upside down. Now, we, and the difference here is we just moved that object a little closer and now it's between 2F and F. Same thing applies, but we get a real image that's bigger than the object. So that's the difference there. Same thing though, if you're here looking at it, it looks like these rays are coming from that spot. Uh, so that is the real inverted image there. The other thing, we could put a screen right here. If you remember real image, you can uh, project it onto a screen. So if we put a screen right here or a screen right here, we would see a clear image of that. If we put the screen too close, and I'm gonna show you a demo in just a minute, if we put the screen too close, you can see it'll, those rays will hit the screen before they get a chance to fully converge to a single point. So we won't get a clear image there. Similar, if we put the screen too far away, the rays have already converged. Now they're essentially diverging again and we won't get a clear image there. So let's take a, a look at a demo showing this concept. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right there. So you can see on the screen, uh, the image is blurry. We don't have it in focus. Now there's a lot of reflection coming off the magnifying glass there. I'm not gonna get in all that. Uh, I'd have to give that some thought where all that's coming from. But anyway, we're focused on the screen. The screen is blurry. So what's happening is the light rays are going through the lens and they're converging, but the screen is too close. So when they converge, it's actually beyond the screen. So those light rays are hitting the screen before they converge. So we don't get a clear image there. It's a blurry mess. Okay, so let's keep going. We'll go in and then come back out. So right about there, we've got an, uh, an image that's very clear. You see it's upside down. That's one indication it's a real image and it's projected onto a screen. That's a real image. So the light rays are converging and we've got the screen right at the proper location, right where those light rays converge and we get that clear image. So let's keep going. I'll move the lens farther away. So now out here, again, a blurry image because now the screen is too far away. So those light rays are converging before they hit the screen and they're actually cross each other. And by the time they hit the screen, they've already converged. Uh, so they're essentially diverging again. We don't get a clear image there. 
Now let's keep going. And then the best part is coming. I'm going to bring it back into focus and watch the street. Look at that jogger go by. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, so there's a demonstration of a real image being projected onto a screen due to a convex or a converging lens. All right, similar to the converging mirrors, converging lenses can also produce virtual images. If this object is brought inside the focal point, if we draw some rays on it, we've got one ray reflecting off of it going parallel to the axis and then through the focal point. The other ray is going to go straight through the center of the lens like that. These rays diverge. They don't converge. They diverge so I know we're going to get a virtual image. So if we're on this side looking through a lens at this object, we see these rays coming at us like that. Our brain traces them back and it appears that they're coming from this location back here. And again, like all these other ray diagrams, we could draw a bunch of rays up and down the height of this, and they're going to line up up and down the height of this image. Virtual image, the rays diverge, um, the virtual image is on the same side as the object, all that. Now, if you're the thinking type of person, you're thinking this looks a little familiar when you see a large upright image. In what circumstance do you look through a lens and see a large upright virtual image? That's a magnifying glass. So this is just that. You're looking at something through a magnifying glass, a little bug, or if you're old like me to read the, the instructions on a medicine bottle, uh, you need to use that magnifying glass and it enlarges that image. So you get a very large upright image like that, all right? Here are some examples. Um, I was looking for an image where it had the same lens doing both of these things. I couldn't find anything. So you'll just have to trust me that these are both the same type of lens. They're both convex lenses, converging lenses. Here we're looking at um, a house across the street like we saw in the demo, and we see it upside down. We know this is a real image. That object, the house, is well beyond the focal point. So the light coming through there gets inverted we see a, an inverted real image. Now this girl is holding it up closer to her eye. We see a large upright image there. This is the magnifying glass. So in this case, I know that her eye is closer to the lens than the focal point. She is inside that focal point and that creates that large upright virtual image. That's the magnifying glass. Okay, one more demo to show you here. I'm gonna show you the, the convex lens, uh, the whole range from uh, an upright virtual image to an inverted real image. So check this out. All right, I start with the popcorn cup outside of the lens, just so we can see what it looks like without the use of the lens. Now I'm gonna move the cup behind the lens, and right there we see a big image. It's big and upright. That's the virtual image. That's like a magnifying glass in use there. This is a convex lens, a converging lens and I must be holding the cup inside that focal point. So we see that large upright virtual image, the magnifying glass. Now I'm gonna back away from the lens. And as I back away, we're gonna see that that image gets bigger and bigger. So I'm still inside the focal point because the image is still upright like that. I know I'm still inside the focal point. It's getting larger. Now, once I hit the focal point, we should see the image change significantly so right there right now we see the image is upside down now i know it's a real image so right in that transition i went past the focal point the image flipped now it's a real image and you can see that image is uh, enlarged it's still larger than the object is now i'm going to keep backing away and let's watch the size of that image as i get farther away that image gets smaller and smaller now I'm at the back, so we can see a relatively smaller image. If I kept going, if the wall wasn't there, we'd see that image get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, but we did see it flipped upside down, so we know it's a real image. As I got farther away from the focal point, that image got smaller and smaller. And now in the end here, I'm going to move the cup up and down, and we can see when I move it down, the cup goes up, and when I move it up, the cup goes down, and that's just because that lens is inverting that image like that. So there's an example of the whole thing uh, with a convex lens. We started with a virtual image, and then we went past the focal point and saw that turn into a real image. 
All right, those demos are really cool to see. They give you a good visual of what's going on, but sometimes it's a little hard to understand exactly what's going on. So we're going to do this sim bucket simulation again. Uh, again, we use this for mirrors as well. I'll put this in the description so you can go play around with it if you want. So we're going to be real quick with this. The First, the diverging lens. Diverging lens always does the same thing always diverges the light rays you always get a small virtual upright image all right no matter where i move this object you get that same result there so again you're on the right side of the lens looking at an object through the lens uh, the the light rays just how they refract like this imagine a big eyeball here you're seeing all three of these rays it appears that they're all coming from this location right there and that's why we say the image appears to be at that location. Again, you always get a small upright virtual image with these diverging mirrors. Or, I'm sorry, diverging lenses. So let's go to a converging lens. So the converging lens converges the light. Right here, I've got the object outside the center of curvature. We get a real inverted image there. Let me take this out even farther. So this is like when I was showing you the image of my neighbor's house across the street, projecting it onto that sheet of cardboard. Their house was even farther away than this. Actually, where I had that cardboard was right about the focal point. That's where the rays converge, but I can't go off the screen with this one. So if we imagine the sheet of cardboard right here, we were getting that clear upside down image of the house. When I move the lens too close, I can't move the lens in this simulation, but let's imagine we move the screen right here, the sheet of paper right there. So there the rays are hitting the paper before they converge to a single point. So all three of these rays, and there's actually going to be a, you know, a, an infinite number of them, but these three rays, they're all coming from that tip of the candle or the very peak of my neighbor's house but they're hitting the sheet of paper at three different locations or many, many, many different locations. That's why we get that blurry image there. So imagine all the points on the house hitting all these locations on the sheet of paper. You get a blurry mess there. But when we're right where they converge, now all the points of all the light rays coming off the peak of the house are converging to that point uh, from the top of the garage door, this point, the bottom of the driveway, this point and so on. When we had the screen or the sheet of paper too far away from the lens, the rays have already converged there. So now they're diverging again. So again, you've got uh, a point from the peak of the house at many different locations on that sheet. You get the blurry image there. Now the popcorn demo, I started inside. So this is the magnifying glass. So again, we're on this side looking to the left through the lens at this candle which is the popcorn cup or whatever you're looking at in the magnifying glass so the rays diverge we've got our big eye here seeing all these rays coming at it it appears they're coming from this location we get that large upright virtual image now when i moved away from the lens with the popcorn cup we saw that image get bigger and bigger and bigger just like this is doing you see that this ray here is coming from the focal point it's hitting the lens higher and higher and actually it's going above the picture here, but you get the idea. And then right when we're at the focal point, that's when it flips over to the other side, right there. Okay, so now we're getting the real inverted image. We can't see it yet, but there we see it. And we see it's pretty big. It's not until we get to 2F, now the image is the same size of the object. We go beyond that, now we get a real image that is smaller than the object. So again, we were on this side looking through the lens at the popcorn cup. Uh, right at the focal point, it flipped from a, an upright virtual image to an inverted real image, larger and then finally smaller. And then we get basically the same situation as the neighbor's house across the street. So that's kind of how that works. All right, let's wrap this up. So we talked about concave lenses, which are diverging lenses. Be careful with the terminology between lenses and mirrors. That gets a little confusing sometimes. They always diverge light. The image will always be virtual, which means it will be upright and smaller than the object. And the image is always on the same side of the lens as the object. Those all, for a virtual image, it's always me on the same side of the lens as the object and it will always be upright. For a diverging lens, that image is smaller than the object. 
The image cannot be projected onto a screen because it's virtual. These are used in eyeglasses. We'll talk about that another day. Uh, the peepholes, because you get a wider field of view. If you look through a peephole, it's always a, uh, a small upright image there. Um, and flashlights. So some flashlights, that plastic cover at the end of it is actually a diverging lens. And what that does is the, the light comes out of the, the flashlight like this. It hits the diverging lens. It spreads it out. So you get a wider field of light with that. The convex or converging lenses, these are able to converge light or diverge light depending on where the object is located inside the focal point or outside. They can produce real images. Uh, this is when they're converging light and the image will be inverted and the image can be larger or smaller than the object. Think about that popcorn cup demo I did. The image will be on the opposite side of the lens as the object when it is real. This can be projected onto a screen as well. We showed that. So converging lenses are used in a lot of different things. Cameras, telescopes, the lens in your eye is a converging lens, eyeglasses, projectors. They can also produce virtual images. We saw that, that's the magnifying glass. Virtual image produced by a converging lens will be upright and larger than the object. They'll be on the same side of the lens as the object. And again, think magnifying glass for that. Flashlights is another case. So I know I said flashlights for the diverging lens, but a flashlight like this, where the end slides in and out like that, and then that changes, you know, whether you have a very narrow beam of light or a wide beam of light. So it does have a converging lens in there. When you pull it out like that, the light source is farther away from the lens, so the light's coming in more parallel, and it will converge to a point, and you get a narrow beam of light like that. Versus if you push it in, now the lens is closer to the light source, so the light rays are coming in at, at a bunch of different angles, and they will converge a little bit, but not as much, so you get that wider field of light as well. So one other thing that I didn't show you a demo of, and I know you're all aware of this, with the converging lens, the convex lens, you can start things on fire with that, a lot like I did with the converging mirror. So the converging mirror, I made sure I had the paper between the sun and the mirror because the light had to reflect off the mirror and then hit the paper. With the lens, it's the opposite. You want the lens between the paper and the sun. It'll converge light to a single point. Same type of deal. You'll get the same effect, that burning paper like that. Okay, that's it. So uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email.